Hi everyone and welcome to this video concerning MongoDB Compass. So this video is going to be a brief overview on MongoDB Compass so you can get familiar with the graphical user interface that it provides you for your MongoDB data as well as learn the different types of things you can do with it. So let's get started without any further ado. So here, the, this is what you get as soon as you open MongoDB Compass. This is the first screen that you get. So what this is basically is that you have to connect to a certain cluster um, before, before you can start working with your database and your collections. So if you have an Atlas cluster, meaning you have a MongoDB instance on the cloud where you're storing data on the cloud, which is MongoDB Atlas, then you can go there and you can get the link that you want to connect to and you would paste it right here. Otherwise, you would just connect to localhost. So localhost means this data is on your machine, the host is your machine, and there is nothing else that you have to do related to the internet itself. So it's all on your machine. So you can here, you can check a, here we're having a new connection. You can have favorite collections. So if you start something, you want this co uh, connection to always be there. This is wh what you would do. You have recent as well. So these are recent collection, uh, connections, I'm sorry. So these are recent connections that I've done. So I can just click this one and this is the connection string for logging in or connecting to localhost. So I connect. Once I do that, now I can see the different, um, the different databases available on my machine. So on localhost. If I had put an Atlas link to a cluster in the cloud, I would have seen the different databases stored there. So these are the databases stored on my machine. So admin, config, local, these are already built in, so you wouldn't have to worry about them. This is where you would have your database. So you can check the create database, and then here you would create a new database. You give it a new name, a name for the first collection, and then you would just simply create it. And when you do that, you would see it right here. So that's pretty straightforward from this end. On the left side here, you have this navigation um, like bar or column, you could say. So you have this here. This is just simply telling you who the host is, who the cluster is. It's a standalone cluster on your machine and what edition of MongoDB this is. So this is MongoDB 4.2.3 Enterprise Edition on my machine. All right. So. These, on the other hand, these are simply the names of the databases. And here you have another button where you can create the databases. Here you have the performance, so you can monitor the performance of MongoDB. So this isn't something you should concern yourself with first as a beginner, because it's just not really important if you simply want to store data and, and an, uh, analyze it and just uh, retrieve from it, add to it, query it. You don't need this tab right here. So entering a database, so I can go to my database, which is a sample that I have. So here are a bunch of sample collections that we have. So now that you can see the collections right here, here you can see that you have a collection name. So these are the different collections available within my database, this database. You can see the number of documents within each collection. You can see the average document size, meaning you can know the average of each single document not the whole collection and here you can see the size of the entire collection so i have a really big collection right here which is movie and it's made of 46k documents the average document size is 482 bytes and the total document size the size of the entire collection is 22.2 megabytes so you can see that this is a particularly larger database although of course you can go even and much larger with mongodb because it's highly scalable okay moving on you have the total index size and the number of indexes. So I have not applied any indexing to this collection. So we have to see one here because we haven't really created any other personal indexes. So you can see the different uh, collections right here. And that's basically all you need to know from this screen. The tab right here is essentially still the same. So moving on and actually checking one of the collections. So this is how you explore your data. This is your data in the MongoDB typical document format. So you have the series of key value pairs, you have the uh, arrays as well. You have a bunch of different things, so you can look around this. And this is how it essentially looks like. This is how it's stored. So if you do not like this view, you can have it in a JSON view. So we know that MongoDB stores its data in JSON format. So this is a typical MongoDB JSON or BSON because we know MongoDB uses BSON. 
um, a typical JSON or BSON format. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's the same data, just in a different format. And you can also optionally check the tabular uh, format. So this is in tables. Now, this isn't recommended if the documents inside your collection are of extremely different formats and schemas, meaning let's say the first one has name and age. The second one has address and name and not even name. So like completely different, but you can do it anyway. So here, this uh, phone extended warranty thingy does not have a color. So there is no field here and these here do not have a color or a price. So it would just have no field for the ones that do not exist within a certain document. So if you're someone who likes tables, you can just check this out. But this can really extend um, and have way too many fields, if, especially if all the documents have different field names. So going back here. So what can we do with this data right here? So what we can do is that if we double click on any certain item, we can manually edit it. Now, this isn't really recommended if you have like user data and you don't want to go around ch changing people's data. But if you want to, you can. So here you can change green and change it to red and then you just click update and then it's red. So you can change it back as well. Let's say green. And updated back you when, when you do that you can also see the different types for everything so here I have price as 12 so and it's an int what if I want to turn it into a string so adding double quotes so I can turn it into a string and now it's a string so it has double quotes now it's no longer a price or I can turn it back into an int all right so that's how you can edit your data you can also choose to copy the document, you can duplicate a document or clone it, and you can also trash and delete a document manually. So if you were just testing, if you were playing around with MongoDB, you can delete it manually. So this is what, what you have if you want to edit your data, if you want to access it, update it, you know, play around with it. If you want to add new data, you have this add data button right here. So you can either import a file, and here you would, e you would import either a JSON or a CSV file, which are CSV are comma separated values. So depending on what you like or what you have, you can import it and it would all be converted into MongoDB BSON format, like the format you see right here. Or you can actually manually insert a document. So here you would type it in a JSON format. So let's say I want name to be Jane. Okay, and it won't allow you to insert it until it's actually syntactically correct JSON. So if you insert, okay, now we see the new document that we just inserted, which is name Jane. And this is the ID that was randomly generated by MongoDB for this document. Next, if you, you can also um, insert the document in a different format. So you can do it like this. So here I would name this field name and now here I would put, let's say, John. Oops, okay, so John, you can use the plus sign here to add more fields. So age 35, so 35. So this is a string because you can see the type here and it has quotations. So I want the age to be an int. I can select int. You can also delete different fields. And this is more, let's say, visually appealing than perhaps typing your own JSON syntax, unless you have a pre made JSON. Um, text that you just want to copy and paste. So go ahead. So if we insert it, and now we should see it right here. So that's pretty much it for inserting data. You can export your data using this button right here. So you can export it as either a JSON or a CSV file. And you can even apply a query. So you can say, I want to only export all the documents who have an age older than five or I want to only export documents who have a name that starts with J. So you can really apply your queries right here and export that into the format that you wish. So either JSON or CSV. We will be having a video within this tutorial playlist about the different types of queries you can write and how you can get and retrieve different data. So when we can learn that, you can apply it here and then query and filter whatever you want and retrieve that and export it. So enough for exporting. That's pretty much what you need to know. So we've covered the data, we've covered these, we've covered the formats. Here you can refresh every time you insert or delete if you want to check um, 
things. So what is this bar right here? So this bar right here is where you would write your filters. So your queries. So I don't want to see everything. I want to see only, let's say, I only want to see documents with the price as 12. All right. So if I enter, this gives me these two documents which have a price of 12. So this is a filter. This is a sort of query in, in a sense. So it's another place to apply your queries without using the typical uh, MongoDB syntax that we do with Mongo Shell. So you can keep that in mind. And if you press reset right here, you can have um, you have the old data back. There are different options. So you can have sorting, you can have projections. So it's it's all up to you to play with it. OK, so what what's next? So here we have the different aggregations. So here you have, if you want to apply a certain aggregation pipeline and you want to pass your data through an aggregation pipeline by like, let's say, uh, summing all the prices or sorting them, or, you know, you have a different um, multitude of things you can do with aggregation that I will not cover in this video because it's a lot so and I want to keep this video brief so we will have a video on aggregation and once we do you can apply that here and you would visualize the different aggregations for your documents for your collection so the schema so the schema is just a way where you can an analyze your data to understand kind of how it's divided and formulated so if we click analyze all right, so here's what you have. So here we have the ID. This is essentially the times when new IDs were inserted. So today is Friday right here, June 19th, and we just inserted John and Jane. So that's why there are um, these bars right here. Okay, so then you can see the age and this is the, the only age we have because this was actually a product database and we had uh, John inserted with the age of 35. So available true. So 100% of the available fields had true as the as the answer, as the value. The colors that we had were green, black, red. So there are no other color occurrences in the documents inside this collection. And then there are different things. So right here are all the uh, popular names that we have. So Jane, John, here are all the names that we have. So we had the phone and product names, and then we added Jane and John. Here are the prices. So there are 67% of the documents having the price field have, uh, uh, have 12 as the price. The others have 38. So here you can even see that 43% um, of the documents with the price field have the price in a format of integer 32, 32 bit, or they 14% have it as a double and the others do not have this field to begin with. So maybe Jane, John, maybe something else. So that's pretty much it. So you can keep analyzing what you have. It's, it's a good way for you to understand the um, understand your data and actually know what you're working with. So here you have the explain plan. So this is more advanced. So I would say let's leave this aside for now and maybe we can discuss it in a future video. We, we have indexes. So if you've created any indexes, um, we, we haven't. So we only have the ID index. So if you've created any indexes, you can see the data about them here. And finally, you have validation. So if you would like to, to have some rules, some validation rules before you insert data into MongoDB, then you can. So you would have to add them manually here. Meaning, let's say I do not want to add any object to my products collection that has a price of zero. So I have to have a rule that validates that this price is greater than zero. And once I do that, then MongoDB will not allow the insertion of any document with a price of zero or less. So that's pretty much it. Now you know the different uh, tips and tricks for MongoDB Compass, you know, the entire collection of features that it offers you, the different things you can do and the different tabs and buttons that you have. So I hope this was useful for you. Please like and leave a comment if it was. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video where we go even deeper with MongoDB.